This is Sweetheart Alabama, the podcast about the little herb shop in beautiful downtown Greenville, Alabama, where we discuss natural health you can do yourself, inspiring you to your own passion, and a little bit about the magic of living in the Camellia City. And now, here's your host, author, herbalist, and energy healer, Danan Witten. Hey, and welcome. It's season one, episode six of Sweetheart Alabama. And today we're going to discuss the sheer terror of starting this little herb shop. Um, I want to tell you about some of the scary parts of it. Um, In case you're thinking of starting your own business, and it's not to discourage you, it's to encourage you. Um, I also want to talk about people with bad energy. You know you've experienced it. We're going to talk a little bit about it. And then I want to tell you about the scandal, the absolute scandal of women voting in Alabama. Hey, y'all. I'm Danan, and I'm living my dream in my hometown of Greenville, Alabama. I actually moved back home to open a tiny little herb shop called Sweetheart Alabama. I also do energy healing, and I love to promote my hometown to the entire world. I do. Come visit Greenville, Alabama, y'all. Um... I'm going to be right back and we're going to talk about a little bit about the shop, how terrifying it is. Hey, I really appreciate you listening to Sweetheart Alabama, this little podcast. Wherever you hear it from, would you share it with your friends and let them know that this is the podcast about the little shop in downtown Greenville, Alabama, um, that's trying to spread love and information and history about our beautiful little town. Thanks. All right, so, Sweetheart Alabama. So, y'all, I have been tr- I had been trying for years and years to get back home to Greenville, Alabama. I was living in Nashville, and while I loved it, and I had the, <laughs> probably the world's best job, y'all, I walked away from the world's, one of the world's best jobs, which was homeschooling one family of kids who happened to be probably the sweetest family ever. I just, and I love those kids and I still do, but my heart was calling me home and my heart was calling me to spread natural health wherever I could and to do my healing work. And so I knew, look, I didn't go in blind. I knew it would be hard going back to your hometown and introducing something new, and kind of putting yourself out there for ridicule. And I knew it would happen, so I just prepared myself for it. And I literally stood out in the cold, terrified, wondering if I would ever get to ever pay a bill, you know. But I really want to talk you through those first steps of how terrifying it was, because I believe wholeheartedly that there are a lot of people who have these amazing dreams and great ideas and they don't prepare themselves for how terrifying it's going to be and um, that it doesn't always get easier but it gets easier to handle the terror being comfortable with being terrified And look, that means, you know, sometimes that means entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Starting a new idea is not for everyone. Um, And that's okay. Um, But let me just give you a short example of how the shop started. And I'm going to, look, I'll tell you more stuff too, because there's a lot of stuff people don't know that I went through. And some of it's very personal, so I'm not going to get into it right now. So I had an Airstream camper trailer and had didn't know how to haul it and didn't have a truck to haul it. And my mother and her husband were nice enough to let me use their truck and I had nowhere to park it. And y'all, I got a place to park it. Now the owner of the land charged me $200 a month. I had to cut the grass. I had to fill in holes and it was right by the interstate and there was no parking and it was terrifying. Um, So pulling into that little place between the gas station and Taco Bell was very difficult. It was hard to pull out of it as well. It was scary. Um, I had a generator, which which was gas-powered, so I had to learn to work a generator, had to put gasoline in it. That was terrifying for me. Um, 
and it was hot in the summertime. And I I just hope that people would be curious enough to say, what's going on here? You know, and some people did. And listen, the people who showed up at the beginning at the, that is the very beginning. A lot of people don't even know I parked there by the interstate for, uh, you know, on and off a little bit and how terrifying it was. And that I put myself out there. People do not know. A lot of people didn't even drive by or see that. Um, but there are some people who, came and shopped with me. Can you believe they shopped with me? And they were like, I saw the look on everybody's faces. They were like, what the hell is she doing? Um, but they came and they asked questions and they supported me anyway. Whoo, that was, that was rough y'all. That was hard. And it was also a time where I couldn't keep, because of the weather, I couldn't keep any of the supplements in the Airstream trailer. So when I left and parked it back at my mom's house I had to take it put everything in boxes and put it back in her house and I don't know how she put up with me but she did with me doing that so in and out all of my inventory every time I was there so finally I found another place to um, sell and that was downtown Greenville Alabama where things really hit off you know but I can't tell you how difficult it was to stand out there, really put myself out there. No, and so many people didn't stop because of ridicule, I, I think. You know, when it happens a lot in small towns that people don't want to be seen doing anything new because, they, you know, like, what were you doing over there at that Airstream trailer? So the people who did stop by and shop with me and met me and reacquainted themselves with me because this is my hometown um they will forever like I will forever be grateful and I understand how difficult it was for them even like it was you know so hard for me don't think for one second that you know getting an Airstream trailer and opening a store and just parking it on the side of the road in your hometown is something that anybody would be able to do without crying before and after. Trust me, I did plenty of that. I did plenty of it. And um, one of the things that really kept me going, y'all are going to laugh, but one of the things that kept me going is how much I knew that there were some people, many people, who were ridiculing me and who were saying I wouldn't make it that I was going to fail, that I wouldn't be there long, that um, nothing. There used to be a saying in this town that Greenville doesn't support local business. I haven't heard that in a long time, y'all. But they used to say it a lot. Well, I'm going on five and a half years now. And um, while I sold the Airstream trailer and found a permanent location, which I absolutely love, it's just a dream, I'm still grateful for having a working bathroom, okay? (laughs) Um, I would never give up, while I'm so grateful for that, I would never, ever give up those hard times. And I wanted to tell you that story because I want you to know that if, if you'll let it be hard at the beginning, whatever your dream is, if you will walk through that fire at the beginning and uh, prove to yourself, that you really want this and prove to yourself that you're capable of anything. I promise you the hard knocks that come along the way and they will come and they will always be there. You know, sometimes it's hard for me to even pay my bills. Um, You'll know you can make it and you'll have more confidence in yourself. So, um, you know, we always say kind of an empty, you know, empty, it sounds empty to say, well, just follow your dreams. Um, as a person who has and um, knows that sometimes it feels like drowning, sometimes it feels like you're out in the desert all alone and people are laughing at you, sometimes it feels um, just so scary and you doubt yourself. I'm gonna, I promise you that if that dream is in your heart, there is a reason for it. And the feeling of following your dream, I can't even, there are no words to explain 
the feeling of self belonging that it will give you. So go through the hard times um, and just know that there are plenty of people who have done it before us and there will be plenty of people who would do it after us and uh, all we have is this life. And if you've got the dream in your heart, there's a reason for it. All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox and be right back. You can find a lot of information about the shop on SweetheartAlabama.com, but if you really want to have fun, check out our TikTok page. And our username is SweetheartAlabama there, or follow us over at YouTube for all kinds of cool information and videos. And the username there is Danan Whidden. Thanks so much. Okay, I don't know if this piggybacks off of this first topic, but I wanted to talk about people with negative energy. And if you're sitting there going, oh yeah, I know somebody popped in your head maybe think about somebody with negative energy just somebody who ugh, just makes you feel icky to be in their presence people who when you see them coming you're like oh god you know um there's a reason i want to talk about people with negative energy okay so if you can realize that you are being affected by someone's negative energy and i want you to just stop and think about that person, whoever you thought of for a second when I said people with negative energy. Now I want you to imagine that person being right next to you right now. Or remember that person being close to you and remember how it felt. Okay? The reason why I want to, and we'll get out of there in a second, so don't worry. But the reason why I want you to remember how it felt or to feel what it's like to be close to someone with negative energy. If you can understand that and it, and say to yourself, yes, we are affected by people's negative energy, then I want you to understand something really happy and wonderful. And that is, you can be uplifted by people with positive energy and people who have learned how to use their energy for good. Ha ha. Now... I want you to understand there are people like that. Um, there's lots of people who naturally do that. You know, people who are just a ray of sunshine that you're just happy to be around, right? There's also people who are trained to use their energy for good. And those people are called energy practitioners or Reiki practitioners. There's other modalities of that, of complementary health. Um, but in training for Reiki, and I've told you guys this before, I've 10 years of it now, 10 years ago, I got my training in Yusui Reiki, which is the original form of Reiki energy healing. Of course, I call what I do just energy healing. Um, and part of so much of that training is, is how to direct your energy and how to hold your energy in a way that doesn't harm people, that actually helps people. So um, if we can understand, first of all, that that negative energy is out there and it affects us, then I also want you to understand that positive energy can affect you too. And uh, so if you have any more questions <laughs> about positive energy and Yasui uh, Reiki or Reiki or energy healing in general, I'd love to talk to you about it for real. And I have had comments and questions about this on TikTok partic in particular. And um, I, I guess I assume that everybody knows this, but all healing comes from God. Like, I'm not the healer. I'm just a conduit of positive energy that helps you allow um, healing and mindfulness and uh, your body to work in optimal ways and being balanced into, into your present. So um, I'm not walking around saying I'm healing people. So I, th I think I need to start calling myself an energy practitioner so people don't think I'm walking around going, I can heal you. <laughs> I don't know why I said it in that accent, but, <laughs> but I'm here to tell you God can heal you. Um, <laughs> but anyway, if you have any... If you have any questions about it, I'd love to talk to you. I love to talk about this kind of stuff, so um, reach out to me for sure.
What would you like to hear on Sweetheart Alabama, the podcast? Send me a message or a comment wherever you're listening and let me know. Okay, so I need to give super props to the Butler County Historical and Genealogical Society. Um, I pulled their April 2020 quarterly because there is some amazing work done by um, one of their members. And I, I happen to know she's an amazing person. Her name is Pamela Nolan. And she has... Uh, written this amazing thing about women getting the right to vote in Alabama, and it is scandalous, let me tell you. So a lot of this, I'm going to be quoting um, Pamela because she wrote this so well, and it's so interesting what happened with Alabama women and uh, the suffragette movement, and also... Um, what happened right here in Greenville, Alabama with it. So we're talking about the 19th Amendment guaranteeing women's right to vote. Oh my gosh. We act like we always had the right to vote, don't we? Or we don't, we don't think about the struggle there. But it's really interesting. And look, the national scene of this was just, it, it got crazy. Even in Alabama it did. Um, most politicians used a very popular argument that women were too fragile for the world of politics. Um, And it was a topic that ladies uh, should not discuss, certainly not with men. Oh, my God. Of course not. Um, There was a Wetumpka native-born woman uh, who was actually, she went to Judson College, she was very uh, vocal and famous in the uh, women's voting issue, and her name was Amara Frances Griffin. She was known as Fanny Griffin, and she was super, super famous and went around talking about uh, wanting women to have the right to vote very early on in 1901. She actually became the first woman to address Alabama legislators um, in Montgomery, Alabama. First time, 1901. I thought that was really interesting. And she was received very well. Of course, they were like, oh, that sweet little lady wanting to vote. Of course, they didn't vote for her, to, for women to to get the right to vote. But they appreciated her coming and speaking and, th- and thought she did quite a wonderful job. <laughs> um, so... There were organizations, the Alabama Equal Suffrage Association um, was formed in Birmingham. Now, that was 1912. And so there were like society ladies, um, women who could afford to be parts of groups like this. Obviously, they were all white. um, And they were very instrumental in just bringing the issue to Alabama and bringing it in front of people. And I thought this was interesting that Pamela wrote, in Alabama, the following classes of adult citizens were not allowed to vote. That was men convicted of treason or other felonies. Um, And these are quotes, uh, idiots, vagrants, the insane, and women. (laughs) And educated women disliked being classed in such company and particularly resented that uneducated black men could vote, but they could not. So, um, and of course, this becomes a bit of a a racial issue as well. We're not going to talk about that today. But, um, unfortunately, in Alabama, the issue came up for a vote in 1915. Y'all know it wasn't going to get ratified in Alabama before it was in the nation. Uh, the vote failed 52 to 43 though, you know, at least it wasn't zero to something. Um, the legislators, legislators, sorry, had actually been highly influenced by anti-suffrage literature distributed in August of 1915, which indicated that suffrage would destroy sexual and racial distinctions in the populace. Really? Hmm. That sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? 
But were there any suffragists, and this is quoting Pamela now, any suffragists in Butler County working to advance the cause? Why, yes, in January 1915, there were 20 local suffrage associations across the state of Alabama, one of which was in Georgiana, Alabama. That's right. The suffragist movement in in our county was actually in Georgiana. Now, there were local papers who were very much against women voting. The Andalusia Star, the Wilcox Progressive Era, the Citizen Examiner, the Luverne Journal, and the Evergreen Current. But here's what I want to tell you. The Greenville Advocate, they were leaning a little towards women getting the right to vote. And I think there's a story there. Well, Here's just a little snippet from the Granville Advocate back in 1914, okay? While everybody's yelling about they shouldn't get the vote, everybody's angry, they're kind of putting in little things, like they're testing the waters here. Um, here's what they wrote. When women get the vote, when women get the vote, it is hoped they will go easy on nagging husbands that have to do housework. And yes, they're making a little joke there. However... Um, it starts, you start to see that the Greenville Advocate is quite progressive on this. Um, in April 15th, 1914, the Greenville Advocate ran a notice of an equal suffrage address for Greenville to be held at the courthouse. Um, Sally B. Powell, who was originally from Greenville and part of the suffrage movement, asked J.B. Stanley, the editor of the Advocate, as a personal favor to give the notice as much publicity as his space and policy would allow. And he did. And he was quite supportive of what probably was not something very popular for people to be supportive of. Um, but her le the lecture um, went over really well. And it was in the Greenville Advocate. And... Um, People started to be a little more open to it because the paper was open to it. So um, they had started to have suffragette dances and debates and programs um, as early as 1915, 1916 in Greenville, Alabama. The actual 19th Amendment was passed by the U.S. Congress on June 4th of 1919. So this is years and years, y'all of them trying. But in Alabama, dun, dun, uh, they were fighting against it. Yes, the federal government had passed the Susan B. Anthony Amendment, but we weren't going to have that in Alabama now, were we? <laughs> and it was Mr. J. Lee Long of Butler County who introduced a resolution that led the fight in the Alabama House of Representatives against ratification of the Susan B. Anthony Amendment. Uh, after the amendment was passed by the U.S. Congress and moved to the states for ratification, the Alabama legislature voted against the amendment and to reject ratification on September of 1919. And look, I'm going to bring this up, but isn't it, you know, when you're on the wrong side of history, it's um, your legacy becomes that. Anytime you're on the wrong side of history, your legacy is no longer the good things that you've done. It's that time you were on the wrong side of history. And it's worth watching today to see that as well. But look, women, of course, did get the right to vote in Alabama. And here's what I love, that the Greenville Advocate reported on September the 17th, 1920, that Stewart Drugstore in Greenville was going to hold a straw vote ballot for the presidential election so that people could practice voting. Women, in particular, could practice voting. I think that's awesome. Also, in 1920, back to the Greenville Advocate, they wrote, nothing is more important just now than getting the women registered. Wide awake women should inform themselves as to the movements of their board of registrars and go to meet them without fail. 
So here they are in 1920 encouraging women to go register to vote in Butler County. In fact, just the next month, the Greenville Advocate wrote, Many Greenville women who were opposed to the movement to get the vote are now registering and will vote. They feel it their duty to vote. So you can see how things change so quickly. Um, and I don't want to get too preachy about being on the wrong side of history or um, how you're looked upon later on. But you know what? I'll just leave you with this that Pamela wrote. More than 8 million American women voted for the first time on November the 2nd, 1920. But I want to read you a quote that Susan B. Anthony famously said in 1894, which is, We shall someday be heeded, and when we shall have our amendment to the Constitution of the United States, everybody will think it was always so. Just exactly as many young people believe that all the privileges, all the freedom, all the enjoyments which women now possess always were hers. They have no idea of how every single inch of ground that she stands upon today has been gained by the hard work of some little handful of women of the past. So thank you all. Um, I don't want to get too deep with that, but it really um, does speak to a lot of what's going on today. It really does. So we've talked about how scary it can be to follow your dreams and follow your heart. We've talked about how um, people have bad energy and how we can harness good energy as well. And we've talked about this audacity of the little ladies voting and being on the wrong side and the right side of history. I want to thank you for listening. Um, Please leave a review or a comment. Let me know what you'd like for me to discuss next. I would love for you to share the podcast with friends. And I hope you see to see you back here next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Sweetheart Alabama. To learn more about the show or about Danan, please visit SweetheartAlabama.com or DanannWitten.com. This is CJ Clark speaking. You can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at CJClark81. This has been Sweetheart Alabama.